So the video you're about to watch is like three different videos that I kind of strung together into one video because I just didn't feel like there was enough footage to make three individual videos uh, of, you know, the appropriate length and, and quality. So instead you're gonna get one mediocre video. <laughs> there we go. So an update on the bushings. So you can see in this picture, I've pulled out the four old bushings and here are the four brand new bushings. I went through and cut one or cut the two that go inside to make them have this, this, this cut off here so that, so it goes against the metal, it works just fine. This is an old one. You can see it still has the slit in it. I find it really interesting that the new bushings that they sent me, and you can see here and here, the new bushings they sent me are ever so slightly larger. The diameter of this hole is ever so slightly larger on the new bushings. It's literally like two one hundredths of an inch larger, which doesn't seem like much, but it is, it's huge. It made a big difference to such a degree that once I bolted these new ones, well, this is the old one. Once I bolted the new ones in, I literally can just do this just push them on by hand. I had to enlarge the hole down here ever so slightly just using the reamer. I literally just made like three passes with the reamer so I can get this bar in there. But now I can just push the damn thing on easy peasy. It's like no trouble at all. So um, I think some manufacturing changed or something from my first set of bushings to these bushings because these bushings are way easier to work with. So eh, whatever. Cool, glad I got that done. Now on to the next thing. Three days later. Hey guys, so this sucks. I went and uh, went to the store to get some WD-40 because I just needed something to lube and I come back to this. This strap, this yellow strap, which is really strong. I've got two of them. That one on this other side snapped. So that's not good. Um, doesn't look like it hit here, but it sure as hell hit there. I've not looked at it. How bad is it? Let's see. A little, a little bit of a lift. Oh, we hit the plastic. It did. It looked like it bumped a little bit right here on the metal, but mostly it's on my zip tip. Oh, frick! All right, let me. Let me get this thing up and try to figure out what kind of damage was done. I don't know if you can see this or not from that angle, but right here is where it hit. It hit right there. Kind of bowed this. You can see it's a little bowed or a little flattened rather, rather, and then kind of bowed out over here on this one side and, and cracked this plexiglass right here. So it hit, I mean, just right there as hard as it could. And that sucks. That has ruined my weekend. Um, I've got to take this off entirely now and see if I can't reshape this a little bit. And I don't know, I don't know a good way to do that. Well, I can't think of a better reason to use nut plates and screws on your wingtip than exactly this right here when you got to take it off. Because if I had to drill all those out, I'd have been done for the weekend. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see, how bad's the damage? Oh, it looks terrible. God. Okay. Not good. This is all boogered up. I'm going to have to replace this, this entire piece. Thankfully, I know what it is, W1009R. This whole piece needs to be replaced and I'm gonna have to figure out how to shape this back to, well, no, these look bad. Frick. All right, I may have to get some professional advice from some people that do this sort of thing. This, this is not good. Everything's fixable. So 
worst case scenario I have to replace well I mean I definitely have to replace a rib and I might have to either double that skin if I can get it back in shape or replace that bottom skin that will suck that's a lot of work instead it might be easier just to do a part I don't know this is going to take some professional advice. I'm going to have to get Vans on the phone for this one to see what they think I should do. But looks like I've got some drilling out to do. How am I going to buck this? All right. Stay tuned. Got to figure something else out. <laughs> Golly. It was shaping up to be such a beautiful weekend, too. Look at it. It's gorgeous out absolutely beautiful out and my plane decides to get hurt hey everyone while i'm in the background working on the plane working on all the things so to speak uh, i just want to say thank you so very much for being a part of my channel and hanging out and commenting and doing all those wonderful things i really couldn't do this without you guys you are an inspiration and you keep this happening believe it or not um, I wanted to remind you that I am going to be in Oshkosh this year. Uh, the plan is to be there all week. And I think on Thursday, we have a uh, builder get together at the Home Builder Pavilion, I believe is where it is. Uh, stay tuned. I'll post the times uh, when I have them. I'm not 100% sure what they are. But we're going to get together and we're going to have kind of a round table and questions and all that stuff. So come on by, hang out with us, and, you know, ask away, you know, just, just, uh, I can't wait to meet all you guys. It's going to be really cool. So we're doing that. And also something really exciting, uh, while editing this video, Vans released the video of their RV 15. So they've, they've, they've actually, they're teasing us with it now. So, uh, a buddy of mine says it looks sort of like, you know, the home built 170 Cessna 170, which is cool. I mean, all right. Uh, but so that's exciting. I, I don't know if they're taking orders for it or anything like that yet. I mean, I think it's just just hot off the presses, right? They're still still doing all the testing, but really cool. Thought I would post that too. There'll be a link down below to Van's channel in the video they actually released. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Can't wait to meet you at Oshkosh. Come on by. And uh, like I said, once I have more times and more information, I'll post it down below. Well, here we are, we're working on the fix, and as you might imagine, I was none too happy to come back out here after, you know, not very long to find out that the strap had fallen and boogered up the end. It was really kind of my own fault for leaving as much a gap between here and the ground. I have alleviated that. That can't happen again now. So, uh, lesson be learned. Check your straps. Check your how you're doing this. Just check on stuff to make sure that's not going to happen again. Um, so now what I have done is I have cut out the end of this rib. So this is not structural, so this was okay. I cut this out and here is that piece. You can see it's all boogered up down here on the end. This rib did the brunt of the work of keeping it from being too deformed. Um, and I've cut it out in such a way that I can get the new one of these end ribs, this W1009R ribs, and put it in there but instead of drilling everything out and then trying to figure out how I'm going to do these rivets up here I've only drilled it out half of it and I'm going to fabricate basically this piece but with a you know a lip going across here that I can rivet it in through this hole right over here so then I'll have a good solid foundation between the old rib and the new rib and then the new rib of course will go in here and continue this curve of course this piece is on back order so god knows when that's going to come but did the best i could to get back in here and re-round it um using a little piece of pipe uh, and like my hammer and just kind of putting it in here and tack 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 you know just you know slowly re-rounding this piece and i have done if i do say so myself a pretty good job it's not a hundred percent but it's a good solid 90 five percent and hopefully the rest of it i can make go away with um like whatever the bondo stuff is called or whatever you know when i when i do the paint and finish on this you won't even know so um yeah not super happy that that happened but i think in the end it could have been a lot worse so got that fix i've re re-strapped it i bought straps that are uh twice as thick twice as heavy 
rated for twice as much weight, and then doubled them to put it back under them. If those straps break, it's, this wasn't meant to be. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so there's that. Now I'm going to pause, wait for this piece to come back in, uh, and switch to my other wing to uh, hopefully get my other wing to at least where this wing is. Eventually. Hey gang, back out here in the hangar and I have some goodies to show you and what we're gonna do with them. So first, let's start with this guy. So as some of you know by now, if you follow Instagram or some of the other places, my wing fell. And I was really un unhappy that that happened, but the brunt of it was actually caught by the zip tip. It's got a little crack on it I can need to do a little repair on. And it bent this downward edge here a little bit and kind of mangled, you can see it mangled the end of this rib, which, you know, was right here. Well, I didn't want to cut off and replace the entire rib. And the reason I didn't want to do that is because this part right here, getting up in here and putting these rivets back in to rivet the top part of this rib to the spar would be tremendously difficult. Um, so instead, what I have elected to do is to cut off and leave this flange. So what I can do is on this one, I can put an inverse flange, put this rib effectively back in there and then just do some rivets across here through this hole, allowing me to basically put this piece back in. This forward bit, this little one rib is not really structural to the rest of the aircraft. So this, this kind of fix is perfectly acceptable. Talk to the vans, they said, don't worry about it, that's fine. And yeah, so that's one of the things I'm gonna be working on today. I have two of these ribs in case I screw this up, I can always try again. So the next thing is this uh, hole, vent hole. This, I can, this is called a NACA vent, I believe. And on the inside, you need some sort of way to funnel the air where you're going. I have this vent SV1. I bought two of these. I should have bought four, and I'll explain why in a second. But I'm just going to put that anywhere. This will go on the inside and line up such that, if I can get it to line up, anyways, the air, when it goes in, it will be channeled down this two inch hose and this goes off onto your ventilation system. Now, I also wanna put one of these on either side in the back of the plane, specifically here. So I've got this template that I've made that I will you know, put up here and draw on here and cut it out. And then this will again, go on the inside. And the idea is you'll have this again, ventilation system in the back that'll bring air up through a hose kind of into the middle and then forward through my tunnels uh, so that we have overhead venting is the idea behind that. So this is something cool I also got that I got to put in. I only bought two because, you know, there's the two on the front. I should have bought four. So I'm going to order two more of these. The final thing is this guy. So this is a rudder cable fairing. So here at the very back of the plane, we have the rudder, rudder cable coming out. And it just kind of sticks out with this piece of plastic. Well, I'm going to put this guy over here. So it's a little more protected. It'll be firm and uh, fixed up against it nicely so that, I don't know, it just looks cleaner. So I'm, that's another thing I'm gonna do. This is not required by at, at all, but I just liked it. And so that's the next thing I'm gonna do. You can get these on aircraft spruce. So as I continue to work in the background, I'm working on uh, cutting and shaping the rib, the new rib, to make it look like what it's gonna look like uh, and you know, attach it down below. And I'll describe that more here in a bit. And then once I'm done with that, instead of putting the zip tip back on, cause I wanna try to kind of address some of the cracking and issues that it caused. The issues were actually pretty minor, honestly. But there's, a, there's a crack right on, right, right at the very tip where it hit the ground. I wanna work on that. See if I can, if there's something I can do to just kind of clean that up a little bit. But then it's, I gotta get to the wing. I gotta get to my other wing and uh, close it up because it's ready to be closed now that I've got the, the tank on and uh, uh, um, put its zip tip on. So, so yeah, we're, we're doing wings today. We're, we're winging it. That's what we're doing. That's a terrible joke. So, <laughs> but anyway, so that's what's going on. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be doing uh, here shortly. Uh, probably not in this video. Hmm. 
I got a dimple. Lots of dimples. Test fit success. When it comes to dimpling, if you can, I really like using this guy. Because it just makes your life easier. Put it in there, and boom, now you have a dimple. Uh, someone did ask on the forums what brand this is. Avery Tools. They're out of business, and I bet if I peeled this off, they were just rebranding someone else's. I'm not sure. There was another label here, but this has had so much in-hand time that my hand has worn all the labeling and whatnot off. I can't imagine that they're all all that different, but I will tell you, this is one of the more expensive pieces in my shop, and it's worth every penny. Um, get get several uh, several different shapes of this though I'm trying to find where the others are Th this is a this is this tool's worth having definitely get one of these but as for brand wise Avery uh, I don't even know if averytools.com is around anymore or if it's owned by somebody else but that I hope that answers your question well all right here we go we got a test fit so here it is all drilled all dimpled ready to go I've still got to cut out this little piece right here which is needed for the zip tips the zip tips have a little bit of a bulbous area that bumps up against this. It won't seat correctly if I don't cut that out. So I'll do that here just shortly. But now I just have to drill where these blue marks are, the holes. So this flange goes up over onto the old rib and the old rib goes down to this lower line. So we'll be able to dr uh, drill those holes out rivet those in and boom, we have a replacement rib. Uh, I did remove all of the rivets all the way up to here, but I didn't, like I said, I didn't do those that are inside here because there's just no good way to get to them. And so, but this works, this looks good. Um, honestly, I'm kind of happy with how that came out. So awesome, gonna drill those holes and then cut that out and then mount this sucker back in. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's where I'm gonna cut this one short. Like I said, this was like three different videos that I just didn't feel I could make one video. So uh, the, the, the results of fixing the bottom of that one wing, I think they came out pretty good. Uh, I think it, I mean, it's, it's not 100%, but at this point I would say it's like 98, 99%. I mean, it's pretty good. Um, I do need to address the zip tip. Zip tip has a slight crack on it. So I need to figure out if there's like a filler or something I can put in there to make it look not cracked. You can't replace the clear glass on the zip tip. I would say that there's one issue that is, they maybe want to see about redesigning. Uh, zip tips are great, but that's one thing you just can't replace that. I think it's glued in, but oh well. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna be okay. It wasn't as big a deal. And as I've said before, everything is fixable eventually. So anyways, thank you so very much. I really appreciate you guys. Like I said, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe and all that stuff, I really appreciate it. And if you really like what I'm doing, jump it over my Patreon page. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can help me support this channel. Again, you're just buying me coffee over the internet, which is awesome because I love coffee. So again, looking forward to Oshkosh. Can't wait to meet you guys and see you there. Come on by, shake my hand. Let's have a chat. See you next time.